Have you ever wondered what would happen if you fell into a black hole? These celestial oddities have long been the stuff of science fiction and curiosity. Yet, they are as real as the stars that twinkle in our night sky. Black holes, despite their ominous name, are fascinating objects that have captured the imagination of scientists and stargazers for decades. They were first theorized by the iconic physicist Albert Einstein in his general theory of relativity more than a century ago. But it wasn't until the late 60s that the existence of black holes was widely accepted in the scientific community. A black hole isn't black in the traditional sense or a hole as we understand it. Rather, it's a region in space where the gravitational pull is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape its grip. This intense gravity is a result of matter being compressed into an incredibly small space. Perhaps the most intriguing aspect of a black hole is the event horizon. It's a boundary in space-time beyond which events cannot affect an outside observer. In layman's terms, if you cross the event horizon, you're not coming back. At least not in any conventional sense. That's why it's often referred to as the point of no return. Despite their fearsome reputation, black holes are not cosmic vacuum cleaners, indiscriminately swallowing everything in their path. You'd have to be pretty close to a black hole to be in danger. In fact, if our sun was suddenly replaced with a black hole of the same mass, Earth's orbit would remain unchanged. Black holes are a testament to the incredible complexity and wonder of our universe. They challenge our understanding of physics and force us to think beyond the boundaries of our current knowledge. Now that we've established what black holes are, let's delve into what would happen if you were to take a trip into one. Imagine for a moment you're on a spacecraft hurtling towards a black hole. A cosmic journey unlike any other you're about to edge towards the limits of known physics and beyond. As the spacecraft moves closer, the black hole's immense gravitational pull starts to make its presence felt. It's here that you'd be introduced to a rather unappetizing term in astrophysics. Spaghettification. Yes, you heard it right. Spaghettification. A term as bizarre as the phenomenon it describes. Imagine a piece of spaghetti. It's long, thin, and stretched out. Now picture yourself and your spacecraft in the same way. As you approach the black hole, the intense gravitational forces would start to stretch and compress you and your spacecraft, much like a piece of spaghetti. The difference in gravity between your feet and your head, the so-called tidal forces, would become so strong that you'd be stretched out in a process astrophysicists call tidal stretching. But it's not just stretching. The same gravitational forces also compress you sideways. So while you're getting longer, you're also getting thinner. You're being squeezed and stretched simultaneously, becoming a string of atoms spiraling into the black hole. This is spaghettification, a gruesome reality of approaching a black hole. But let's not lose hope just yet. Remember, we're dealing with the extremes of the universe, and in this realm, the bizarre is the norm. Theoretically, if your spacecraft is strong enough and you're moving at just the right speed, you might just survive this initial phase. You might remain intact, resisting the pull of spaghettification as you approach the event horizon, the point of no return. So, you've survived the initial approach. But what happens when you cross the event horizon? That, my dear listener, is where our journey into the unknown truly begins. As we cross this threshold, we move into the realm of the unimaginable, the place where the laws of physics as we know them start to break down. Are you ready? Crossing the event horizon, the point of no return, would be an experience like no other. Imagine a boundary around a black hole invisible to the eye yet so powerful that not even light can escape its grasp. This is the event horizon, a cosmic point of no return. As you approach, the black hole's immense gravitational pull stretches your spacecraft into a long, thin strand in a process whimsically called spaghettification. The black hole's gravity is so strong that it warps time itself, causing time dilation. For you, inside the event horizon, time would seem to pass normally. But for an observer outside, your journey would appear to take an eternity. Now what happens after crossing this boundary? Here's where things get really interesting. The conventional wisdom suggests that all matter inside the event horizon crushes down into a single point, a singularity, where physics as we know it breaks down. The singularity, a point of infinite density, is the heart of the black hole. But what if the singularity is not the end of the story? Some theorists propose that beyond the event horizon, you might find a tunnel to another universe or another part of our own universe. This hypothetical tunnel, a wormhole, could potentially provide a shortcut through space-time, but it's all highly speculative. The reality is, 
We don't know what lies beyond the event horizon. It's one of the greatest mysteries in the universe. Crossing the event horizon is a one-way trip. Once you enter, there's no coming back. You are forever trapped in the black hole's clutches. But here's a thought to tickle your curiosity. What if there was a way to survive? Could we somehow navigate through the event horizon and come out the other side? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the theoretical survival inside a black hole. While it seems unlikely, some theories suggest there might be a way to survive a trip into a black hole. Let's delve into the realm of theoretical physics, where the impossible becomes possible. Imagine for a moment, black holes not as destructive monsters but as cosmic doorways to other universes or points in time. Sounds like science fiction, right? But some theories actually support this. One such theory involves white holes. Think of white holes as the mirror image of black holes. Where black holes gobble up everything around them, white holes on the other hand, spit out everything they consume. Now there's a thought. Could it be possible that black holes are connected to white holes, and we are simply transported from one end to the other? Fascinating, isn't it? Another intriguing theory is the concept of wormholes. Wormholes are shortcuts through space-time like secret tunnels in the universe. The idea is that a black hole could potentially lead to a wormhole, which could transport you to another part of the universe or even a different universe altogether. So instead of being crushed to a singularity, you'd be on a cosmic roller coaster ride to somewhere else in the cosmos. But here's the catch. These theories, as fascinating as they are, remain purely hypothetical. We still don't have concrete proof of white holes or wormholes. And even if they do exist, the intense gravitational forces and radiation within a black hole would likely not be survivable. Yet the idea itself is tantalizing, a testament to the power of human imagination and our relentless pursuit of understanding the universe. It's a reminder that in the vast and mysterious cosmos, there are still so many unknowns, so many possibilities yet to be explored. So, while it's a long shot, it's possible that you might come out the other side of a black hole alive. So, could you really survive going into a black hole? It's a question that's been haunting us since we first delved into the enigmatic nature of black holes. Over the course of our exploration, we've attempted to unravel the mysteries of black holes, these monstrous celestial entities that warp the very fabric of space and time. We've embarked on a hypothetical journey, crossing the event horizon, the point of no return, where even light cannot escape the black hole's insatiable gravitational pull. We've pondered over the theoretical possibilities of survival, exploring the concept of wormholes and white holes, and the intriguing idea of a parallel universe on the other side. We've delved into the realm of quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity, trying to find a loophole in the laws of physics that might offer a glimmer of hope. But as we've seen, black holes are not something to be trifled with. Their destructive nature is unparalleled in the universe. They rip apart stars, devour entire planetary systems, and distort the very essence of reality. The immense gravitational pull, the relentless tidal forces, and the inevitable singularity at the center of a black hole make the chances of survival incredibly slim, if not entirely non-existent. Could there be a way to survive a trip into a black hole? Theoretically, perhaps. But in reality, it's a different story. The destructive forces at play are simply too powerful, too overwhelming, even if we could somehow withstand the immense gravitational pull, the tidal forces would rip us apart, and even if we could somehow survive that, we'd still have to face the singularity, a point of infinite density, where our understanding of physics breaks down. In the end, it's probably best to admire black holes from a safe distance. But who knows what future discoveries might reveal? As we continue to probe the mysteries of the universe, we may yet find a way to survive the seemingly unsurvivable. Until then, black holes remain a fascinating, yet deadly enigma. Have you ever wondered about the mysteries that our universe holds? What if one of those mysteries was right in front of you? Our universe, a vast expanse of time and space, is brimming with enigmas that boggle the mind. From the smallest subatomic particles to the largest galaxies, every corner of the cosmos is teeming with intrigue and wonder. It's a labyrinth of celestial bodies and phenomena, each more perplexing than the last. The stars that twinkle in the night sky, the planets that orbit them, the black holes that swallow everything, and the galaxies that house them all. Each element of our universe is a riddle waiting to be solved. And yet, amid this cosmic jigsaw, there are mysteries that remain largely untouched, their secrets veiled by the sheer complexity of their nature. One such mystery that has fascinated scientists and astronomers alike 
is the concept of white holes. Before diving into the concept of white holes, imagine a black hole, a region in space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, not even light. Now hold that image in your mind as we flip the script. Welcome to the fascinating world of white holes. Theoretical entities that are in essence the mirror image of black holes. If black holes are the ultimate cosmic vacuum cleaners, white holes are the ultimate cosmic sprinklers. Black holes are regions of space-time with gravitational forces so intense that nothing, not even particles or electromagnetic radiation like light, can escape from inside them. They're like cosmic roach motels. Everything checks in, but nothing checks out. Now imagine a cosmic object that's the exact opposite. Instead of an insatiable gravitational pull that sucks everything in, it possesses an incredible force that repels everything. This is the concept of a white hole. While black holes are constantly gobbling up matter and energy, white holes could theoretically be continually belching them out. Picture a cosmic geyser, continually erupting with matter and energy. However, it's crucial to note that while we have solid evidence for the existence of black holes, white holes remain purely in the realm of theoretical physics. Their solutions to Einstein's equations of general relativity that exhibit this repelling behavior, yet we've never observed one. The idea is that a black hole distorts space and time so much that maybe, just maybe, it could puncture a hole through the fabric of reality itself, creating a gateway or a wormhole to another universe or another time. And on the other end of this theoretical wormhole, a white hole, spewing out everything that the black hole sucked in. To put it all together, if a black hole is a cosmic trapdoor from which nothing can escape, a white hole is like a cosmic fountain, continuously spewing out matter and energy. In simple terms, while a black hole sucks in all matter, a white hole is said to spit it out. But the question remains, if black holes exist, do white holes exist too? To dive into this mystery, we must first understand that our knowledge of the cosmos is largely based on theories and hypotheses, conjectures built on layers of scientific analysis and mathematical calculations. White holes in this context are a fascinating conjecture, a theoretical possibility that emerges from the equations of general relativity, the very same equations that predicted the existence of black holes, which have since been observed and studied. Here's the interesting bit. Black holes as we know, are regions of space-time exhibiting such strong gravitational effects that nothing, not even particles or electromagnetic radiation such as light, can escape from inside them. White holes on the other hand, are the theoretical opposites. They are regions of space-time which cannot be entered from the outside, but from which matter and light could escape. In simple terms if a black hole is an entrance, a white hole could be an exit. But, if black holes are voracious consumers, swallowing everything that comes too close, and white holes are the ultimate cosmic spitballs, why haven't we observed any white holes? Well, that's where the mystery deepens. Some cosmologists suggest that white holes could be incredibly unstable, collapsing upon themselves before they could be observed. Others propose that white holes might exist in other universes as part of the multiverse theory. It's also important to note that while black holes have been observed and their existence is well accepted, the existence of white holes remains purely theoretical. We don't have any direct observational evidence for white holes as we do for black holes. Despite the lack of empirical proof the theoretical possibility of white holes continues to stimulate scientific discussion and inspire flights of imagination. The existence of white holes, though not yet proven, remains a tantalizing possibility. The cosmos as always keeps us guessing and every answer we find seems to bring with it a host of new questions. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the universe, who knows what we might discover next. Now, let's imagine for a moment, what would happen if you entered a white hole? This is a question that has puzzled scientists for decades. The truth is, we don't know for sure. But let's dive into the realm of the theoretical and explore some possibilities. Firstly, one must understand that white holes, like their counterparts, black holes, possess extreme gravitational forces. These forces are so strong, that they warp the fabric of space-time itself, creating a vortex of sorts, a tunnel through the cosmos. Now, if you were to approach a white hole, these powerful gravitational forces would begin to affect you. The closer you get, the stronger these forces become. And these forces are not uniform. They are much stronger at your feet than at your head, assuming you're approaching feet first. This differential in force would stretch you out, much like a piece of spaghetti. This phenomenon, aptly named spaghettification, would be your likely fate if you were to journey too close to a white hole. But let's take a step back. 
What if you could somehow survive this extreme stretching? What then? Well, you'd find yourself in a strange and alien environment. The laws of physics as we know them would be distorted, contorted by the immense gravitational pull of the white hole. Time and space would seem to bend and twist around you, creating a surreal and otherworldly experience. And what if you made it all the way through? Would you emerge on the other side in some distant part of the universe or perhaps even another universe altogether? Again, we simply don't know. The math suggests it's possible, but until we can test these theories, they remain just that, theories. What we do know is that, much like their black hole counterparts, white holes do not seem to offer a return journey. Once you've crossed the event horizon, there's no turning back. A journey into a white hole, much like a black hole, would be a one-way trip. Why does the concept of white holes matter? Well, the significance of white holes is incredibly profound. They are a cornerstone in the field of astrophysics, offering a unique perspective that challenges what we know, or think we know, about the universe. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the cosmos, white holes could potentially shed light on some of the most elusive phenomena that baffle scientists today. In the grand cosmic ballet, black holes are known for their voracious appetites, gobbling up anything that ventures too close. But if white holes do exist, they could be the cosmic spewing counterpoints to black holes, a fascinating possibility that could redefine our understanding of matter and energy flow in the universe. The idea that matter and energy could emerge from these celestial entities, rather than being swallowed up, is a radical departure from traditional astrophysical norms. Moreover, white holes could offer insights into the enigma of dark energy and dark matter. These are two of the biggest mysteries in astrophysics today, making up a whopping 95% of the universe. Yet, despite their prevalence, we know very little about them. If white holes are real, they could be the missing piece of the puzzle, helping us unravel these cosmic conundrums. White holes could also potentially play a role in the study of quantum gravity, a field that attempts to reconcile quantum mechanics with general relativity. This would be a game-changer, helping us to address some of the most fundamental questions about the nature of space and time. Finally, the concept of white holes stirs the pot of scientific and philosophical debate. It challenges us to think outside the box, to question our assumptions, and to always keep exploring. After all, the universe is a vast, ever-changing tapestry of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. The mysteries of white holes continue to captivate us, fueling our curiosity and our drive to understand the universe. The universe is full of mysteries and white holes are just one of them. This cosmic conundrum, the theoretical counterpart to a black hole, has been a topic of fascination and debate among scientists and astrophysicists worldwide. We've delved into the concept of white holes, exploring their theoretical existence based on the principles of quantum mechanics and general relativity. We've journeyed into the heart of a white hole, a journey of pure speculation and imagination, given their elusive nature. We've also examined the significance of white holes, their potential role in the creation of new universes, and their implications for our understanding of space-time. These celestial enigmas challenge our perception of the cosmos and push the boundaries of our scientific understanding. As we continue to explore the cosmos, who knows what other mysteries we might unravel. Welcome to my channel, Hassanor the Maritime Traveler. For interesting videos, please subscribe to my channel. In this video, I will talk about what will happen to us if Earth falls into a black hole. Sounds scary? Okay, let's get started. Mass, charge, spin. There are three properties of a black hole that are, in principle, measurable. Their mass, their spin, or angular momentum, and their overall electronic charge. Indeed, these are the only three parameters that an outside observer can ever know about since all other information about anything that goes into making up a black hole is lost. This is known as the no hair theorem. Put simply, no matter how hairy or complex an object you throw into a black hole, it will get reduced down, or shaved, to its mass, charge and spin. Of these parameters, mass is arguably the most significant. The very definition of a black hole is that it has its mass concentrated into a vanishingly small volume, the singularity. And it is the mass of the black hole, and the huge gravitational forces that its mass generates, which does the damage to nearby objects. Space spaghetti. One of the best-known effects of a nearby black hole has the imaginative title of spaghettification. In brief, if you stray too close to a black hole, then you will stretch out, just like spaghetti. This effect is caused due to a gravitation gradient across your body. Imagine that you are headed feet first towards a black hole. 
Since your feet are physically closer to the black hole, they will feel a stronger gravitation pull toward it than your head will. Worse than that, your arms, by virtue of the fact that they're not at the center of your body, will be attracted in a slightly different, vector, direction than your head is. This will cause parts of the body toward the edges to be brought inward. The net result is not only an elongation of the body overall, but also a thinning out, or compression, in the middle. Hence, your body or any other object, such as Earth, will start to resemble spaghetti long before it hits the center of the black hole. The exact point at which these forces become too much to bear will depend critically on the mass of a black hole. For an ordinary black hole that has been produced by the collapse of a high-mass star, this could be several hundred kilometers away from the event horizon, the point beyond which no information can escape a black hole. Yet for a supermassive black hole, such as the one thought to reside at the center of our galaxy, an object could readily sink below the event horizon before becoming spaghetti, at a distance of many tens of thousands of kilometers from its center. For a distant observer outside the event horizon of the black hole, it would appear that we progressively slow down and then fade away over time. Bad news for Earth. What would happen, hypothetically, if a black hole appeared out of nowhere next to Earth? The same gravitational effects that produce spaghettification would start to take effect here. The edge of the Earth closest to the black hole would feel a much stronger force than the far side. As such, the doom of the entire planet would be at hand. We would be pulled apart. Equally, we might not even notice if a truly supermassive black hole swallowed us below its event horizon as everything would appear as it once was at least for a small period of time. In this case, it could be some time before disaster struck. But don't lose too much sleep. We'd have to be unfortunate to hit a black hole in the first place, and we might live on holographically after the crunch anyway. Mind the radiation. Interestingly, black holes are not necessarily black. Quasars, objects at the hearts of distant galaxies powered by black holes, are supremely bright. They can readily outshine the rest of their host galaxy combined. Such radiation is generated when the black hole is feasting on new material. To be clear, this material is still outside the event horizon which is why we can still see it. Below the event horizon is where nothing, not even light, can escape. As all the matter piles up from the feast, it will glow. It is this glow that is seen when observers look at quasars. But this is a problem for anything orbiting, or near, a black hole, as it is very hot indeed. Long before we would be spaghettified, the sheer power of this radiation would fry us. Life around a black hole. For those who have watched Christopher Nolan's film Interstellar, the prospect of a planet orbiting around a black hole might be an appealing one. For life to thrive, there needs to be a source of energy or a temperature difference. And a black hole can be that source. There's a catch, though. The black hole needs to have stopped feasting on any material or it will be emitting too much radiation to support life on any neighboring worlds. What life would look like on such a world, assuming it's not too close to get spaghettified, of course, is another matter. The amount of power received by the planet would probably be tiny compared to what Earth receives from the sun. And the overall environment of such a planet could be equally bizarre. Indeed, in the creation of Interstellar, Kip Thorne was consulted to ensure the accuracy of the depiction of the black hole featured. These factors do not preclude life, it just makes it a tough prospect and very hard to predict what forms it could take. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please check different reference materials and books. Welcome to my channel, Hassanor the Maritime Traveler. For more interesting videos, please subscribe to my channel. Let's talk about what happens at the center of a black hole. There are several possibilities and all of the possibilities are very weird. Let's explore some possibilities. It could be that deep inside a black hole, matter doesn't get squished down to an infinitely tiny point. Instead, there could be a smallest possible configuration of matter, the tiniest possible pocket of volume. This is called a Planck star, and it's a theoretical possibility envisioned by loop quantum gravity, which is itself a highly hypothetical proposal for creating a quantum version of gravity. In the world of loop quantum gravity, space and time are quantized, the universe around us is composed of tiny discrete chunks, but at such an incredibly tiny scale that our movements appear smooth and continuous. This theoretical chunkiness of space-time provides two benefits. One, it takes the dream of quantum mechanics to its ultimate conclusion, explaining gravity in a natural way. And two, it makes it impossible for singularities to form inside black holes. 
As matter squishes down under the immense gravitational weight of a collapsing star, it meets resistance. The discreteness of spacetime prevents matter from reaching anything smaller than the Planck length, around 1.68 times 10 to the power of 35 meters. All the material that has ever fallen into the black hole gets compressed into a ball not much bigger than this. Perfectly microscopic, but definitely not infinitely tiny. This resistance to continued compression eventually forces the material to uncollapse, i.e., explode, making black holes only temporary objects. But because of the extreme time dilation effects around black holes, from our perspective in the outside universe it takes billions, even trillions, of years before they go boom. So we're all set for now. Another attempt to eradicate the singularity, one that doesn't rely on untested theories of quantum gravity, is known as the Gravistar. It's such a theoretical concept that my spellchecker didn't even recognize the word. The difference between a black hole and a Gravistar is that, instead of a singularity, the Gravistar is filled with dark energy. Dark energy is a substance that permeates spacetime, causing it to expand outward. It sounds like sci-fi, but it's real. Dark energy is currently in operation in the larger cosmos, causing our entire universe to accelerate in its expansion. As matter falls onto a Gravistar, it isn't able to actually penetrate the event horizon, due to all that dark energy on the inside, and therefore just hangs out on the surface. But outside that surface, Gravistars look and act like normal black holes. A black hole's event horizon is its point of no return, the boundary beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape. However, recent observations of merging black holes with gravitational wave detectors have potentially ruled out the existence of gravistars, because merging gravistars will give a different signal than merging black holes, and outfits like LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, and Virgo are getting more and more examples by the day. While gravistars aren't exactly a no-go in our universe, they are definitely on thin ice. Planck stars and gravistars may have awesome names, but the reality of their existence is in doubt. So maybe there's a more mundane explanation for singularities, one that's based on a more nuanced, and realistic, view of black holes in our universe. The idea of a single point of infinite density comes from our conception of stationary, non-rotating, uncharged, rather boring black holes. Real black holes are much more interesting characters, especially when they spin. The spin of a rotating black hole stretches the singularity into a ring. And according to the math of Einstein's theory of general relativity, which is the only math we've got, once you pass through the ring singularity, you enter a wormhole and pop out through a white hole, the polar opposite of a black hole, where nothing can enter and matter rushes out at the speed of light, into an entirely new and exciting patch of the universe. One challenge. The interiors of rotating black holes are catastrophically unstable. And this is according to the very same math that leads to the prediction of the traveling to a new universe stuff. The problem with rotating black holes is that, well, they rotate. The singularity, stretched into a ring, is rotating at such a fantastic pace that it has incredible centrifugal force. And in general relativity, strong enough centrifugal forces act like anti-gravity, they push, not pull. This creates a boundary inside the black hole, called the inner horizon. Outside this region, radiation is falling inward toward the singularity, compelled by the extreme gravitational pull. But radiation is pushed by the anti-gravity near the ring singularity, and the turning point is the inner horizon. If you were to encounter the inner horizon, you would face a wall of infinitely energetic radiation, the entire past history of the universe, blasted into your face in less than a blink of an eye. The formation of an inner horizon sows the seeds for the destruction of the black hole. But rotating black holes certainly exist in our universe, so that tells us that our math is wrong and something funky is going on. What's really happening inside a black hole? We don't know, and the scary part is that we may never know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more information, then please do review books and articles. Halloween is a time to be haunted by ghosts, goblins and ghouls, but nothing in the universe is scarier than a black hole. Keep watching to know more about black hole and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Black holes, regions in space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, are a hot topic in the news these days. Half of the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Roger Penrose for his mathematical work showing that black holes are an inescapable consequence of Einstein's theory of gravity.
Andrea Ghez and Reinhard Genzel shared the other half for showing that a massive black hole sits at the center of our galaxy. Black holes are scary for three reasons. Let's talk about them. If you fell into a black hole left over when a star died, you would be shredded. Also, the massive black holes seen at the center of all galaxies have insatiable appetites. And black holes are places where the laws of physics are obliterated. 1. Death by black hole. Black holes are expected to form when a massive star dies. After the star's nuclear fuel is exhausted, its core collapses to the densest state of matter imaginable, a hundred times denser than an atomic nucleus. That's so dense that protons, neutrons, and electrons are no longer discrete particles. Since black holes are dark, they are found when they orbit a normal star. The properties of the normal star allow astronomers to infer the properties of its dark companion, a black hole. The first black hole to be confirmed was Cygnus X1, the brightest X-ray source in the Cygnus constellation. Since then, about 50 black holes have been discovered in systems where a normal star orbits a black hole. They are the nearest examples of about 10 million that are expected to be scattered through the Milky Way. Black holes are tombs of matter. Nothing can escape them, not even light. The fate of anyone falling into a black hole would be a painful, spaghettification. An idea popularized by Stephen Hawking in his book, A Brief History of Time. In spaghettification, the intense gravity of the black hole would pull you apart, separating your bones, muscles, sinews and even molecules. 2. A hungry beast in every galaxy. Over the past 30 years, observations with the Hubble Space Telescope have shown that all galaxies have black holes at their centers. Bigger galaxies have bigger black holes. Nature knows how to make black holes over a staggering range of masses, from star corpses a few times the mass of the sun to monsters tens of billions of times more massive. That's like the difference between an apple and the Great Pyramid of Giza. Just last year, astronomers published the first ever picture of a black hole in its event horizon, a 7 billion solar mass beast at the center of the M87 elliptical galaxy. It's over a thousand times bigger than the black hole in our galaxy, whose discoverers snagged this year's Nobel Prize. These black holes are dark most of the time, but when their gravity pulls in nearby stars and gas, they flare into intense activity and pump out a huge amount of radiation. Massive black holes are dangerous in two ways. If you get too close, the enormous gravity will suck you in. And if they are in their active quasar phase, you'll be blasted by high-energy radiation. How bright is a quasar? Imagine hovering over a large city like Los Angeles at night. The roughly 100 million lights from cars, houses and streets in the city correspond to the stars in a galaxy. 3. Supermassive black holes are strange. The biggest black hole discovered so far weighs in at 40 billion times the mass of the sun, or 20 times the size of the solar system. Whereas the outer planets in our solar system orbit once in 250 years, this much more massive object spins once every three months. Its outer edge moves at half the speed of light. Like all black holes, the huge ones are shielded from view by an event horizon. At their centers is a singularity, a point in space where the density is infinite. We can't understand the interior of a black hole because the laws of physics break down. Time freezes at the event horizon and gravity becomes infinite at the singularity. The good news about massive black holes is that you could survive falling into one. Although their gravity is stronger, the stretching force is weaker than it would be with a small black hole and it would not kill you. The bad news is that the event horizon marks the edge of the abyss. Nothing can escape from inside the event horizon, so you could not escape or report on your experience. According to Stephen Hawking, black holes are slowly evaporating. In the far future of the universe, long after all stars have died and galaxies have been wrenched from view by the accelerating cosmic expansion, black holes will be the last surviving objects. The most massive black holes will take an unimaginable number of years to evaporate, estimated at 10 to the 100th power, or 10 with 100 zeros after it. The scariest objects in the universe are almost eternal. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please check books and articles related to black hole. Welcome to my channel Hassanor the Maritime Traveler. Black holes, the enigmatic cosmic entities known for their immense power and insatiable gravitational pull. But can these celestial giants themselves be destroyed? Let's find out can we destroy black holes. Don't forget to subscribe for more interesting videos like this. What is black holes?
Black holes are incredibly dense regions in space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape their gravitational pull. They form when massive stars collapse under their own gravity, creating a point of infinite density called a singularity, surrounded by an event horizon beyond which nothing can return. Can we destroy black holes? Let's push the boundaries of physics and contemplating the possibility of breaking the universe itself. 1. Can you destroy black hole by nuclear bomb? We all know that big booms have the power to break things. To set the stage, let's ignite a spectacular explosion by unleashing the entire nuclear arsenal of our planet around our tiny black hole. Just imagine the impact and chaos. As we nuke our miniature black hole, it grows exponentially in size and mass, becoming even more colossal. 2. Can you destroy black hole by antimatters? Antimatter, the counterpart of regular matter, has an extraordinary ability, it annihilates regular matter on contact. But what if we threw a mass equivalent to that of the moon in antimatter at a black hole? Unfortunately, the black hole erases the identity of anything entering it, whether it's matter or antimatter. The crux is this. Black holes care only about gravity, dictated by an object's total mass energy. 3. Can you destroy black hole by antiparticle? What if we dared to collide a black hole with its antimatter counterpart? This exciting scenario presents itself. A particle and its antiparticle share the same mass but opposite charge. When a black hole meets its anti-black hole twin, the charge cancels out, resulting in a new, more massive black hole. The universe keeps its secrets locked tight. 4. Can you destroy black hole by tearing down event horizons? Much like a charged black hole repels particles due to electromagnetic forces, rapid rotation can create a centrifugal effect that counteracts gravity. If either charge or spin becomes excessive, the event horizon disintegrates, freeing objects from eternal imprisonment. But disrupting this cosmic balance may have unforeseeable consequences. What happens when a black hole destroyed by tearing down event horizons? 1. A black hole singularity is not at its core. It's in the future of what crosses its event horizon. 2. Approaching the center is like moving forward in time due to space-time curvature. 3. The past and future swap roles around black holes. 4. Imagine a scenario without event horizons, leading to naked singularities. 5. These disrupt space-time, erasing predictability and causality. 6. Physics as we know it may break down, resulting in inexplicable phenomena. Why space-time doesn't break? 1. Nature might prevent the formation of naked singularities. 2. Event horizons act as barriers, safeguarding the universe from singularity chaos. 3. Black holes might serve as guardians against the potential chaos of singularities. You can destroy black holes by waiting. When pondering the destruction of black holes, it's crucial to consider the consequences. Breaking event horizons might shatter the very foundations of the universe. Instead of taking such risky paths, there's a safer option, patience. Black holes emit Hawking radiation, slowly losing mass over eons until they evaporate. This natural process ensures that, given enough time, even the most colossal black holes will vanish. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information check books and reading materials related to black holes. What is a black hole? To fully appreciate why you can't just swan dive or pilot your spaceship into a black hole, you must first understand the basic properties of these gravitational goliaths. Simply put, a black hole is a place where gravity is so strong that no light, or anything else, for that matter, can escape. Black holes are aptly named because they usually don't reflect or emit light. They're only visible when they're feeding on stars or gas clouds that stray too close to their boundary, called the event horizon. Beyond the event horizon lies a truly minuscule point called a singularity, where gravity is so intense that it infinitely curves space-time itself. This is where the laws of physics, as we know them, break down, meaning all theories about what lies beyond are just speculation. Black holes seem exotic to most of us, but they're commonplace to scientists. Physicists had toyed with theories about similar objects for decades before Albert Einstein's general relativity predicted their existence. However, the concept wasn't really taken seriously until the 1960s, when extremely compact stars were discovered. Today, black holes are considered an ordinary part of stellar evolution, and astronomers suspect our Milky Way galaxy holds millions of them alone. What would happen if you fell into one? So, 
The big question. What would happen if you fell into a black hole? Well, the prognosis isn't great, to be truthful, whichever sort of black hole you picked. If you leapt heroically into a stellar mass black hole, your body would be subjected to a process called spaghettification. No, really, it is. The black hole's gravity force would compress you from top to toe, while stretching you at the same time. Thus, spaghetti. A supermassive black hole has a slightly less horrendous effect, so let's imagine then that you opt for one of these to make your giant leap for mankind and scientific research. Sagittarius A, pronounced Sagittarius A star, and abbreviated as SGRA asterisk, is a supermassive black hole at the heart of the Milky Way, believed to be around 44 million kilometers across and containing approximately 4.31 million solar masses. It was discovered in 1974 by two astronomers, Bruce Ballack and Robert L. Brown, but remained unnamed until 1982. Your journey into Sagittarius A asterisk itself would begin after you slip over the event horizon, the point of no return. You would be able to see out from inside, but no one would be able to see you because any light would fall back on you. The good news is that although the gravitational pull is much stronger than smaller black holes, the stretching tidal force is less, meaning you won't be turned into spaghetti. But the bad news is you wouldn't be able to get out. Or could you? Well, your hope lies in the theory of white holes. Put simply, if a black hole sucks things in, then a white hole spits them out again, wherever that may be, and the two are connected via an interdimensional tunnel, known as a wormhole. Or, it's also hypothesized, if you waited long enough, the black hole will turn into a white one, anyway. This process is thought to take billions of years, but there's no reason to be disheartened. Why? Well, due to the intense gravitational forces within, time would be speeded up for you so it would be over in a matter of milliseconds. Of course, at present, this is only a theory. If you want more proof of the inadvisability of swan diving into a black hole, consider the tidal disruption picked up by three NASA telescopes in 2014. It was caused by a star that had come too close to a black hole at the center of a galaxy, about 290 million light years away. It was distorted, stretched, and shredded as it was sucked into the singularity, while the residue of the destroyed star was flung out in a cosmic belch.